every Indiana football game is the same, for we are forever stuck in college football purgatory. This is a template, but this one gets revised from crushing loss against ranked opponent to soul-breaking loss that pushes entire season to the brink of failure. I don't like to be dramatic, and I don't like to overreact, and I don't like to blame coaches. An eight-win Indiana season that seemed to be there for the taking a few months prior is quickly turning into one that could see the Hoosiers at home for the holidays for the first time since 2014. After a fast start in College Park, Indiana, dropped yet another heartbreaker, 42-39, this time to a Maryland team that looked to be overmatched heading into the game, and for a decent chunk of the day as well. Indiana led 16-7 early in the second quarter, and looked to be pulling away perhaps, when Peyton Ramsey overthrew a wide-open cold jest on a would-be touchdown that could have put the Hoosiers up by three scores early. That of course didn't happen. A Hayden Whitehead punt was blocked and returned for a Maryland the very next play, and, well, here we are. Indiana is now 0-5 in Big Ten play, despite holding late second-half leads in four of those five games. They'll need to win three of their final four games to make a bowl and sit two games behind Rutgers in the conference, something S&P Plus only gives them a round of 33% chance to do. This is bad, this was a bad loss, and I'm riding you from hell. Here's three things about another very dumb football game. A Max Bortenschlager led offense scored 42 points on Indiana. This is a problem. We've heard all the talk, you've seen the stats, Indiana is a defense-first football team right now. At first glance, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. Allen's genius in 2016 was only supposed to grow into the season, taking the nation's most returning defensive production into a unit that can be the program's Belco. Stats validate that, largely. Indiana's 20th in the nation in defensive S&P, which is something that would have been impossible in eras Cameron or Denardo or Lynch or Wilson, for the most part. So, today, consider. The nation's 87th best offense led by a third-string quarterback named Max Bortenschlager scored 42 points on Indiana. Not all of those points were offensive, of course. Six came on a blocked Indiana punt. Exactly half of Maryland's points came on drives of 14, 0, and 18 yards. It was still far from a track meet for the Terps, only raking in around 345 yards of total offense. Still, the points came, and if you'd like to head down a rabbit hole, it gets at just why it's semi-concerning for a program like Indiana's to build around defense. Dominant defenses, more rest than offensive units, often rely heavily on consistently recruiting better talent. Defensive consistency requires big, ginormous, athletic dudes, and lots of them. Those players are in short supply and far easier to acquire if the name on the front of your jersey says Michigan or Ohio State or Alabama. Perhaps that explains part of what we've seen in 2017 with Indiana's defense. For a program of Indiana's stature, the depth isn't there. It's maybe why you've seen the Hoosiers wilt in later games, why you've seen schemes start successful, to only wilt as the games proceed on. Indiana's offense is a total hot mess. You can pick your point you'd like to complain about. Peyton Ramsey's completion numbers look great, but seems to be ineffectual throwing the ball more than 10 yards down the field. There's little zip on passes, and it limits Indiana's vertical threats. That would be a problem, but Indiana's offensive line can't hold blocks long enough to throw downfield. It leads to a simple scenario, defenses pack the box, bring routine pressure, and give little respect to Indiana's ability to get the ball downfield. Such makes a bad rushing attack worse. Translation, Indiana basically has a quick, intermediate passing game and absolutely nothing else. You can blame that on players, sure, but there's little creativity in the scheming or play calling to offset those weaknesses either. It's becoming fairly clear that a Mike Debert defense will take little in the way of chance and is largely reliant on whatever individual talent he stumbles into to create meaningful production. There's not going to be a plug-and-play dynamic offensive system where lesser recruits can be coached up and wildly productive, 
as was often the case under Kevin Wilson at Indiana. This, in the long term, should be concerning to you.